This episode of Book Reviews and Rants is brought to you by December 10, a curated collection with statement pieces sure to make you a perfect 10. Co-founded in 2013 by Tia Blunt and Tori Jones, this Christian company wants to leave a legacy, not just for themselves, but for all women. Their legacy began with their mothers, whose birthdays are both on December 10th. Tia and Tori handpick each piece that you will find on their site. What makes them unique is that they only order one piece. Experience this e-boutique with chic on-trend statement pieces. December 10, Love Life Legacy. Hello and welcome to Book Reviews and Rants again. Today I am going to be reviewing two books that have nothing to do with one another. The Conduit by Stacey Rourke and Divergent by Veronica Roth. Um, I'm basically going to be reading from reviews I've already posted elsewhere, but then I'm going to allow myself two minutes to rant about the book, the review, or anything associated with it after that. It should be fairly interesting. Okay, well let's go ahead and get started. First up is The Conduit. I give this five blue books. As dysfunctional families go, the Garrett family um, is actually doing pretty well considering that the Garrett kids, now teenagers and young adults, have been displaced from their home and are now living with their retro grandmother as their mother stays behind to pick up the pieces after the death of her husband and their father. Even with that consideration, Celeste is a pretty good big sister. Kendall is almost the perfect little sister who just also happens to be beautiful. And Gabe could be a lot worse seeing as he is the middle child and the only boy. But then one day, uh, the evil Barnabas decides to exact a centuries old revenge and the Garrett kids receive an, inherent, an inheritance they'd rather leave to the dogs. With superpowers shaped shifting and young adult hormonal disillusionment, The Conduit is a fascinating, thrilling, and at times hilarious read. I really didn't know what to expect when I started this book, but I had read good things about it. I knew it was, yay it was a yay fantasy series, but that was about it. I also knew that I loved the artwork of the griffin on the cover of the book, but sadly, that cover has been discontinued. At least, I do like the new covers and now all the series covers match. From beginning to end, The Conduit was an exciting read. Even when the author had to slow down a little bit to explain something, the characters are so neurotic that the explanations came off as action-packed. The only time the action slowed down was when the sarcastic humor of the author spilled out through her characters offering abundant laughter. There were a few touching moments in the story, but they were um, but they were perfectly paced, and the flow of the story was constant, was a constant wave of moving forward towards the end. Not that this book was terribly long, but it also wasn't short either. I enjoyed reading the book so much that I finished it much quicker than I had expected. When I purchased The Conduit, I thought I was just testing out this new author and had no intentions of reading further. But halfway through this one, I bought the sequel and can't wait to get the next one after that. I'm not an avid reader of yay fantasies and tend to toe the line when it comes to liking it, but this book is great. Younger children may not get some of the references, but if it were made into a movie, I would give it a rating of PG-13. Um, it's good for the whole family. Dad may not be interested at first. So uh, there's my rant. And <laughs> hold on just a second. Okay. <laughs> Forgot to have my handy dandy timer with me, aka my phone. So I'm going to set my timer for two minutes just to rant a bit. Oh no, that was an hour and two minutes. I'm not gonna talk that much, people. All right, here you go. So this is the first book in the series. There's four books in the total series and I have read them all and I will be reviewing them all. It'll take some time for me to get to them, but um, 
I really like this series, which is really saying a lot because I I am touch and go when it comes to young adult fiction. Some of it is not for me, and some of it I like. But this is one of the few that I really love. And I think this because it's a young adult fantasy series, but it's also funny. I really appreciate humor because humor is not something that I'm personally good at writing, but I enjoy it. Um, I love comedies, you know, movies, and I like seeing stand-up comedy. I have a good sense of humor, at least I think I do. People tell me that I do. But um, it's not really a strong point for me when I write. So when I read something that's good and funny, it just, you know, brings a spark to me. So I really like it. Uh, there's many reasons why I like this story, but what it basically boils down to is that I do think it's something that's easily relatable. It gives you lots of action and drama and all that kind of stuff, but it's it's down to earth too. It's not so beyond, you know what I mean? I am not knocking Middle Earth in the slightest, but there's nothing in this story that's going to be hard to grasp, whereas, you know, Middle Earth is out there, you know? So I like that it's a down to earth good story. And um, I did mention something about the covers earlier. When I first bought the book, it was because I loved the Griffin. And then that was discontinued and there were these other covers that came along and I liked those just because they kind of lined up. Well, those have been discontinued and now there's a whole new set of book covers for the series. And I like the fact that they do line up, but I'm going to be honest, the new set of book covers are not my favorite. I feel like... <laughs> not the Oh, that's my time! Alright, so I'm not going to continue ranting about the book covers. I'll just say they are what they are. You can't mistake them, so that's probably good for the author. Okay, so let's see. The next book is Divergent. And I gave this book five blue books. Here is a story that is simple yet complex all at once. It's yay and I like it. No question, which is really saying a lot for me. As for all dystopian novels, there is a ridiculous amount of struggle in this book. But if there what <laughs> but if there wasn't, it wouldn't really be dystopian. I don't know if anyone else feels this way, but the story screams irony to me. Factions are somehow established to keep order and bring peace to this world, seemingly built out of wreckage. But the characters in the book don't seem to realize how their factions are flawed and will ultimately be their demise. And here I have some parentheses because at this point I'm just making a prediction. I don't really know. Beatrice starts out as a small and meek member of the selfless faction and through a series of hard to imagine, understand and believe events ends up being Triss this semi-femme fatale member of the brave faction. There is a great deal of violence to the story that may be all shock value, but since I like action in my movies, why not in my books? There are several unanswered questions remaining when the book comes to an end, but I don't feel like I was lost in my understanding. I know what I know about the story and assume the rest will be explained later. Even if my questions are never answered, I've enjoyed the intrigue. While this is a great novel for teens, I wonder if younger teens will be able to grasp the meaning of it all. I enjoy the story immensely, but I can understand why someone who is either a true fan of dystopian works or who isn't a true fan of VA works might have a problem with it. In any case, I think it's worth the read just to find out whether or not you like it. Asterisk. I can't imagine what Hollywood will do with this story on the big screen. I'm a little scared. So that was my original review. So let me set my timer. And here we go. So the first thing I want to point out is that there's three books in this whole Divergent series. I've read the first one and the second one. I have not read the third one. So there's still some things that are kind of have been explained but are still kind of unclear to me so I'm gonna do my best to not try to reference anything that happens down the road at the point at which I wrote this review I was very intrigued I mean I felt like there were some flaws happening in the story but I still liked the way it all came together I am not a fan of cliffhangers so to speak 
I'm, I don't have a problem with the story continuing, but I hate it when someone writes a book and then just stops it so that you have to read the next book to go along with it. And I don't feel like that's what this book did, which is why I explained it the way I did. There are a lot of things that are unexplained, but I feel like the, this particular book came to a conclusion for this part of the story. And then the next book picks up whatever the next part is. So I don't feel like the, you know, the author was just trying to drag the story out. I feel like that there was some type of, you know, closure here, but there is more to the story. And, um... So, I mean, from what I understand, some people love it, some people hate it. I liked the first book. Talk about the second book later, third book, when I get to it. I have not seen the movie, and I don't know that I want to. I don't watch movie previews. That's a topic and a show for another time. But just from what I've heard from it, it's probably not worth me seeing, especially considering some of the rants I've done about other movies based upon books. But... Who knows, maybe I'll check it out one day and I'll have something to amend. But for now, I like this story. Um, I even like the fact that it's flawed and maybe that maybe it's supposed to be that way. Um, sometimes when I'm reading a book, I think maybe the author thinks they're being more clever than they are and there's my time. But I've been guilty of that myself. Okay, so, well, that's all for today. Um, I'm... <laughs> I'm sure that was more than a mouthful, especially with me running around and everything. So, um, what did you think of these reviews? Do you have any questions? Um, what would you have rated either of these books? You can leave your two cents in the comments below. Next month, I'll be reviewing the titles, Who, Who Censored Roger Rabbit by Gary K. Wolf and A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. You can follow me on Twitter using the hashtag review rant. Tell me what you think of next month's titles and you'll have a chance to be featured in my next episode. On Saturday, I'll be posting an episode of Vinyl on My Mind and next Monday, I'll be posting an episode of Toy Box Movie Reviews. And remember, if you're ever interested in guest hosting or sponsoring a Toy Box webisode, just visit etoythomas.com to learn more. So until next time, this is Toy Thomas saying that I think authors should be just as important to the world to the world of entertainment as music groups and movie stars. See ya.